Hi, um, in a recent video uh, a couple of months ago, I read you the um, uh, cat's eye uh, collimation tool, and uh, just a couple of days ago, I received the uh, BCXL L A. Uh, um, this is a I don't want to call it a collimation cap or something. It's just a thin hole. Um, with a, a larger hole in the bottom and a reflective area uh, around this one. Um, the basic idea is that uh, when you are using those two collimation tools together, you are first aligning the uh, center mark and uh, try to close in the um, reflections um, so it uh, corresponds to each other. Uh, and then you put this one in and adjust the uh, main mirror so that the uh, uh, center spot is uh, concentered with the the hole when you are looking through this. So um, follow me into my observatory and we will take a close look at uh, how this is supposed to work. I don't know if I'm going to hit it spot on. Uh, this is the first try with this one. You're watching Exo Photography. I am Daniel. Let's try to uh, collimate uh, the scope with the uh, instructions I have uh, uh, written from uh, a quite a good video uh, on YouTube. I will put a link in the uh, description. So the first step, actually we're going to use uh, three um, uh, kind of eyepieces. Uh, the first step is to um, center the secondary mirror. Um, you can use a chassis with a crosshair or uh, something so you can see the um, outer edge of the secondary. Uh, I have been using one of these. It's a two inch concenter eyepiece. It has uh, uh, some laser etched circles inside. I really recommend this one. Uh, it's super easy to use and it's not so expensive either. So first of all, step one, uh, put this in and adjust the secondary mirror. Uh, what you want to uh, do is uh, align the mirror um, along the axis of the tube so it is perfectly aligned. Then you also want to uh, rotate it so um, it's uh, uh, it's aligned with the circles in this one, basically. The other um, tool we're going to use is the Cat's Eye Infinity. This is the XLK um, uh, XLKP-A. It consists of a it's uh, two holes uh, inside this one. I also reviewed this in an earlier video, but it's a center pupil and is it is an offset pupil hole. Uh, in the bottom of this, um, it's a mirror. This mirror is uh, reflecting the center spot of the primary mirror. Um, the third tool we are going to use is the uh, cat's eye. You can see if I can um, get this up. Um, one small hole. Uh, this is kind of a chess eye, uh, but it has a reflective area here. Uh, this is used to uh, adjust a primary mirror. Okay, so um, I'm standing behind the camera now, looking straight down the tube. Um, 
this is the secondary adjustment screws and you can see the orange backside of the secondary mirror that's a heating pad um, but I have just um, focused on to that spot here this is the center spot um, when you are looking through the infinity uh, eyepiece um, there are four reflections um, actually three reflections the first one that is called P is the primary uh, well not reflection but primary uh, mark um, that one is going straight from uh, the mirror balanced in the secondary and out the eyepiece this is image is the most clear um, that one you need to align with the reflections some reflections is um, rotated uh, 180 degrees so the thing is when I am adjusting the uh, secondary mirror um, those three um, edges of the center mark is going to interlock with the inverted image um, so um, let's try to see if we can nail that down step one uh, put the concentro eyepiece inside the drill tube. It's recommended to not use these thumb screws at all or a maximum of one thumb screw. Uh, but I just like to hold this down uh, with my fingers uh, and take a look and watch if the secondary mirror is center under the focuser. And I have previously done this, so I know that my secondary is centered. So let's move on to step two. Okay, so step two, uh, we're going to insert the uh, infinity eyepiece and watch through the center pupil hole. And then what I am seeing right now is the uh, first and most clear uh, image of that center spot. And I am seeing three reflections through two of these reflection is uh, inverted so I'm going to look at the most clear reflection uh, which is just bounced off the secondary and into the eyepiece and the second most clear which is inverted and I can see that these are not properly aligned so what I am going to do now is remove this one and insert the black cat to see um, how properly aligned the primary is. And this is quite easy to use. Um, basically, you want to hit the center spot so it corresponds with the hole. It's straightforward when you look into one of these you understand just directly how to use it so I can see the primer is not quite there yet it's a bit off okay so we now know that the uh, the secondary mirror um, is just out of uh, collimation and also the primary mirror is uh, tilted slightly away uh, from hitting the center spot. Let's insert the cat's eye again. Or, oh, excuse me, the infinity eyepiece. Um, and we are now at step four. Insert the infinity XLK and look through the center pupil. Adjust the secondary mirror. You now want to stack reflection P and three, which is the strongest reflection and the weaker inverted reflection when they are stacked the secondary mirror is aligned so let's go on with that one I'm just holding this one down I'm going to reach inside the scope and adjust the secondary screws okay there we go so right now the primary reflection the strongest one uh, has just interlocked with the weaker inverted reflection called 3 so they are uh, just hitting the edges of each other and looks like a complete donut. We now want to align the primary mirror. 
So we need to watch through the center pupil of the Infinity XLK and adjust the primary mirror adjustment screws so that all four reflection is stacked up, leaving a black background and a single center swap reflection. Okay, so I am seeing the reflections from the uh, secondary mirror is... I need to adjust it just a bit further. There we go. And then I need to bring the bottom screw of the mirror. I have now adjusted the primary mirror screws so all the reflection is um, quite centered. Uh, I now want to double check and verify that with um, looking through this one and what I want now is to the center mark is uh, uh, just hitting the outer edge of this one and it is almost spot on so now I am going to uh, adjust let's see that screw in the two o'clock position yeah, there we go. Perfect. Okay, so right now the camera is pointed straight through the uh, center pupil hole of the Infinity eyepiece. And what you're looking for right now is just one reflection. Um, when the scope is out of collimation, you will see uh, two reflections like this one and to rotate it 180 degrees with the edges pointing well yeah inverted I will now switch to the uh, black cat uh, chess I and we'll have a look of how that looks like okay so I don't know if you can see this but I'll try to zoom in a bit or focus a bit oh there you can see so the white donut around the hotspot is the reflective area of the uh, black cat eyepiece and inside that donut you want to have the hotspot so this is basically spot on uh, and I hope that this will uh, do the trick for me so next up is a um, test of shooting some images uh, I usually take test images of open star clusters or where there are a lot of stars so I can see how the edge of the image is going to look. Okay, this is a follow up. Um, last night uh, I checked the collimation and uh, it looks like uh, I have actually made to <laughs> get some uh, round stars uh, finally at last. Um, I believe the difference was that. Um, the shorter uh, focuser body uh, is able to hold the weight of the image train better than the longer focuser and also the collimation tool uh, helped me get the uh, uh, collimation to a, a better degree than before so I just have some test shots at the uh, Dumbbell Nebula um, I forgot to save that image, it, it was just a basic 30 second exposure um, but it shows, uh, I'm, I'm quite happy with how that looked like um, so um, after I have done the test shot I um, went along with creating a new polar alignment I usually do that every uh, beginning of the season Next time it's clear outside, I will do the big sky model. I usually do it with around 80 stars or something um, to be able to take longer exposures. I usually do about 5 or 10 minutes unguided exposures. Uh, and by that time I will be truly be able to um, see how the stars look like. That's all for um this episode <laughs> i hope you like the videos please subscribe to my uh, youtube channel uh, comment if you have any questions or 
if you have any um, advice or, or something I've made wrong or something that I you want me to show you. Um, have a good one. Bye.